and welcome to the first episode within our Weekend Jewelry School. I'm Melissa Muir. In this video, we are going to talk about pliers, what to look for, what you do need, what you don't need. And there's a lot of different choices out there. And as you begin your jewelry making journey, you will figure out what works best for you. Now, there are a lot of different styles and types and handles and lengths. And again, that's going to end up being a personal preference. So I'll show you kind of a good place to start. So here you can see I have a wide assortment of jewelry making tools or different pliers and you don't need all of this. I have this because I teach. And another part of the reason that I have all of this is because it's taken me a while to figure out what I want. When looking for pliers, there are three main spaces or types of pliers that I'm going to use. One is a flat nose plier. The second is a chain nose plier. And the third is a round nose plier. Now the noses are these ends here that we're talking about. And of course, if you have a flat nose, chain nose, or round nose, it also describes the shape of that. So here you can see that we're a little broader, but on the inside, it's flat here, and it's also flat here along that top tip. That is my flat nose plier. This is great for holding things. Then I also have my chain nose plier. The chain nose plier looks an awful lot like a round nose plier where it's rounded out here on the top. However, on the inside, we also have that flat profile that we saw within the flat nose pliers. Now this is important. You know how you've seen chain nose pliers or needle nose pliers out in the garage or your shop or your general tools that you get for around the house and they have those little ridges on the inside? You do not want any ridges on the insides of your pliers. And the reason for that is because when you are working with your metal, whether it be wire or sheet or whatever, and you squeeze, well, those little jaw marks are going to be transferred to your metal. And think about trying to stick an ear wire into your ear that has those little ridges. That is not comfortable. So we want to make certain that we have a special set of tools just for jewelry making that have that flat face. That third pair that I was talking about is my round nose plier. And it is completely round and it comes to a tapered point. So it's a cone. Now these mandrels or these noses are also known as mandrels or spindles. So you can hear that those terms kind of interchangeably. And as you begin to do your jewelry making journey, you will become more familiar with all the different tools that are here and these these particularly, these three will become second nature to you. They will be your hands. They will be everything. So you will get used to these quite well. Now, because they become a part of you, having a pair that fits you and is comfortable is of utmost importance. Now, when most people start, they just go to the store and they buy some pliers and they go with that. And that is a great way to start. And I would highly suggest to begin with, maybe you do that and you get a pair of inexpensive pliers that you can then begin to get the feel for. And as you do that, then you can move your way up to some nicer pliers that have the feel that you need for your particular hands. Some people have large hands, some people have small hands, some people prefer long handles versus short handles. This particular pair of pliers is a standard plier. So this is going to be something that most people will have. It's about a six inch plier, but there are also handles that are much longer. So just to show you the difference, here's our chain nose pliers, both in a short handle and a long handle. The way that you hold these is similar, but they're going to feel different. Now, how do you hold your pliers? You should never hold your pliers with your fingertips like this. I see a lot of this in my classes because people think, oh, well, I'm working with a precision thing, but you have no range of motion here for one, and you only have the strength that you can get from your fingertips which often is not enough. And you end up damaging your wire or your piece or not being happy with the, uh, or with the shape that you end up with. So what you want to do to hold your pliers is to rest it in the palm of your hand. And it will fit kind of nice and you'll, 
you'll see how simple and easy it fits right into the palm of your hand. So then I like to keep my index finger up here kind of by the jaws. And this way I can guide my piece or if I need to, I can use it to wrap my wire against it or whatever. And you'll see that as we go through this series. So I want to be able to grasp and hold on. Now you can see I have a much greater range of motion. I have a lot more control and more importantly, I have a lot of strength here. The same is going to hold true if I'm holding a longer pair of pliers. So you'll see this pair is going to sit, like the end of it sits right here in the palm of my hand. Whereas when I use a longer nose, the, the end of this comes down a little bit further. Notice that I'm not quite up here as far at the top as I was in my shorter pair. And again, this is just going to be based on your own personal preferences when it comes time to hold these. Another style of plier handles that you might find occasionally come without any kind of grips on them. However, they are a little bit textured here and there's also no spring in them. Now the way that you would hold this is a little bit different. So you would hold this into your hand kind of like so and either with both your pinky and your ring finger um, on the inside of this so then you can control your pliers like this or you might have your pinky out. And this is more of a traditional way of, of holding your pliers that traditional jewelers would use but it, it definitely takes a bit more practice to learn the control with this but some people feel like they have a lot more control and they can feel their metal a little bit better because they don't have the softness of the grips that you have on some of the other pliers. So you have a couple of different options, but like I said, regardless of which way you use, it is definitely going to require some practice on your part to develop the skill to hold these pliers properly. Now, in addition to the three profiles that I showed you, the round nose, flat nose, chain nose, we have a couple of additional. One is called a bent chain nose. So it's just like the chain nose pliers, but the end of it is bent or curved. A lot of people really like this if they're working in tight spots or if they're doing chain mail, and we'll talk a little bit about the different types of jewelry making later but this is one that a lot of people will, will use. In my studio, I rarely use this. So I don't know that I would recommend this as a first purchase unless it already comes in a kit that you purchase with a whole assortment of pliers. The next one is called a needle nose plier and it's very, very similar to a chain nose plier. The difference is that our needle nose plier is thinner, whereas our chain nose has a thicker profile. And the needle nose plier, the, the nose on this is going to taper down a little quicker than what you would on a chain nose and it's going to allow you to get into some tighter spots. This is really good for lighter gauges of wire, whereas your chain nose is going to be really more appropriate for thicker gauges. And we'll talk all about gauges and everything coming up in other videos. In addition to sizes of the jaws, so both of these are chain nose pliers, but notice that the one here on my left is much shorter and smaller than the one here on my right. And again, the plier itself is a little bit shorter. So you have a lot of different size options that are available. In addition, you'll also notice this one has foam on the handles, whereas we have kind of a non-stick or kind of a grippy rubber that on my purple pair here. And again, these are just going to be preferences that you have and you'll get into that as you, you start to play more. As you become more comfortable with all of your tools and jewelry making, you will finally get to the point where you're ready to upgrade your tools. And like I said, I would highly suggest if you're just starting out, save your money at first. Get a pair of nice economy pliers. Don't go cheap cheap. Okay, there's no reason for that because sometimes your tools will make or break you and you might think that things are being terrible when really it was your tool. So don't go cheap cheap on them but don't go too expensive yet. 
okay, until you really know that this is something that you're going to want to do and really get into. Then you can start to look at some nicer sets of pliers and nicer tools. Okay, two of them that I really like, this is the Weber series and this is the Chonix series. Now, when you jump up to these, you're definitely looking at a big price increase. So you go from about six to ten dollars per set of pliers to anywhere of thirty to even sixty dollars per pair of pliers. And again, I would not start with the higher end ones unless you know that it's really something that you're going to get into. But first, get your hands dirty, get that grip, get that that motion, the feel of how to use them first and then you can begin to update. Now let's talk a little bit about plier storage because these pliers can be everywhere and there are all kinds of storage solutions. And let me show you a couple of my storage solutions and then I'll talk about a couple of others. So one of my first things that I use are these little plier racks and you can even create your own. They're very, very simple. It's just like a little triangular rack with a couple of different dowels. So what I will do is just take this, take my pliers, leave them open and just rest them into here. That triangle it has already kind of taken into account that that's how pliers would like to sit. So it's easy to put them into this and keep them like that. Now in my studio, I have about five of these little racks all over the studio and that is because I have different areas that I work and so I wanna have pliers in each of those areas. For you, you probably are only going to start with one set of pliers and it'll be very easy to take care of. Now another solution is an envelope. So this is something that I usually have all of my student kits in and it's nice because it protects all of my pliers and it keeps everything together nice and neat. So I can just slip these all in here and now I'm ready to go with my class tools. And this makes it very easy to carry around. I can slip this into my bag and do whatever I need to do. There are also commercially available plier stands where you can just slip your pliers into this. This would be a very simple one to make if you just have some wood lying around your studio as well. Very simple and now they're all nice and organized and in one little area. Now I've also seen where people have taken magnetic strips and applied that to the front of their bench or along the back of their bench. You can also just put a wooden dowel somewhere and hang them on the wooden dowel or pipe. Now keep in mind without the additional two, so if you only have just the one, the pliers tend to rock and fall off easily. So I would highly suggest you have another couple of, of mandrels just below it so that those pliers can really sit and be stabilized. Now that I've told you a little bit about the different faces, what to look for, let me show you how to use these and why you need those different faces and the different shapes to these pliers. So I'm going to start with my round nose pliers to begin with and I want to use this to create a loop. Now notice that I didn't try to create this loop all in one go at the first time. So, and I didn't want to necessarily wrap right around the plier itself. This is really thick, so, and I'm just doing it very fast. This is not the best loop, but you get the idea. And with doing this, I'm able to create these nice circles. Now, if I wanted to do something more with this, then I would switch to something that has a flat jaw on the inside. Whether I work with my chain nose pliers or my flat nose pliers, you want to have something that can grip that and not leave marks. Because if I were to come back in here and hold with my chain nose pliers, I have very little surface area of this held and my piece is not stable and I'm going to leave marks and mars here on my metal as well. The flat nose pliers are going to be really good for holding onto things and bending things, but as you begin to work with jewelry making, you will find when different pliers make more sense to use than others. But 
This allows me to create some corners. Now again, this gauge of wire is really thick, and so I'm not going to get crisp corners or edges on this because it is such a thick piece of metal. Now my chain nose pliers are going to allow me to get into tight areas that maybe I couldn't have with my my flat nose pliers. So you can see here, if I put my flat nose plier even right here in the corner of this square, if I try to bend my wire, it's not going to necessarily meet up with this little um, joint that I have. And with my chain nose pliers, I can get in and be far more precise. And as we get going in this series of videos, I will be using the pliers all the time and I will be sure to point out how I use each one differently. We've now covered quite a bit when it comes to pliers. There is so much more and that will definitely come as we go through the rest of this series. But hopefully now you have a little better understanding of what to look for when you buy those pliers. Making certain that those jaws are nice and even, you want that smooth jaw on the inside. You want to make sure that you're buying at least a decent quality. They don't have to be high end, but I would definitely not go super cheap on these. I know that you think well, I might not do this, it's just a hobby. But really, your tools can make or break you. If you have a bad tool, sometimes you can't work your way through that. And if you don't have the skill to begin with, you definitely don't wanna start off with bad tools. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'm looking very much forward to the rest of the series and I will see you guys next week for our weekend jewelry school. Mm -hmm.